Hi, and welcome to Intune Training, the place to learn about Intune with Jake and Johannes. Today, we're going to be talking about the new remote help feature that's currently in public preview. As a side note, I'd also like to congratulate Johannes on becoming a new MVP. So congrats, Johannes. Thank you, Jake. It was quite an effort, but it paid <laughs> off in the end. Well, with that being said, I'm going to pop into a demo box for us. Now, this is going to be a client device that we have. And there's a couple things that we need to actually enable before we can actually do this public preview. Yes. The very first one is actually enabling it and your tenant. And to do that, we're going to head over to tenant administration. We'll give that a few seconds to load. And then go to connectors and tokens. And the first option should be remote help and preview. Depending on what you actually have within your tenant, it may be in a different area. But once you actually get into your remote help, you're going to go over to settings. And by default, it's going to be disabled. You need to enable that. And mm -hmm. then you have a secondary option for to allow remote help into unenrolled devices. So these would be devices, for example, a, a user's uh, home device that they use for some work-related thing or whatever. For example, if they use an RDP into um, a corporate device or BDI or whatever, and they need help with that. So you need to enable this to allow that to happen. Otherwise, this is for your for the corporate owned devices only. Exactly. And once we have that enabled, you can, depending on the second option you select, total doesn't necessarily matter for this. We can hit save. And then additionally on the screen, you will see a remote help sessions, which will actually give you a log of what actually like actually occurred during any kind of session, like who actually helped the recipient specifically. Um, you'll notice that we obviously did a test earlier just to make sure everything was functioning properly. Um, but if you wanted to get an actual log of what happened, you'd go to this remote help sessions. You can see some auditing, like when did the session, session start and when did it end? Exactly. That can be a sensitive subject in some environments, like who accessed what and when. And with that, if you're familiar with using Quick Assist within Windows, this remote help utility is actually very similar to it. It does have a slightly different front end, but the actual experience for the end user is going to be relatively the same, except you'll have some added benefits like being able to use UAC prompts and things like that. However, yep. it's not built in to Windows like Quick Assist is. So you actually have to deploy it yourself. And to do that, we're actually going to follow along with the, the docs straight from Microsoft, which we'll, we'll link down below, obviously. Um, but to do that, you do have to install the remote help tool from Microsoft. On um, both your device as the um, mm -hmm. administrator and then on any device that you will be targeting. It needs to be on both ends. And now you can install this manually if you want. However, with Intune, we obviously want to automate that entire process. However, Johannes, what happens if you do try to install it manually? It will attempt to cancel the installation. So this is a very early release. So keep that in mind. I'm sure they will fix this sooner than later, though. Yes. Now, again, the downside is you do have to package this up yourself. Um, so we are going to walk through quickly the Win32 Win content prep tool. Now, again, the docs do kind of walk you through how to get this going right away, but it's very simple. Download their download remote help option. So just aka.ms slash download remote help. Once you actually have that, um, you'll notice that I actually have that XE in this remote help folder, and I'm going to launch that Win32 content prep tool. Simply going to launch it, grab my path here, Type in the name of the actual XE just to verify it is remote help.exe. And I'm going to put that in a separate folder so that that Intune win file actually gets created. And we'll hit enter again. Don't necessarily care about a catalog, so we're going to say no for that. And it should package everything up for us that we need. So once you've got you've done that, this before. <laughs> plenty of times. <laughs> So with that in mind, you get your Intune win file. And that'll actually allow you to go into your Intune tenant, go to your app section. And of course, we're going to give this a second to refresh. It's always a waiting game. But over on the app section, we can go to our all app section, add a new app, reference the Win32 
um, lineup is or basically the Win32 uh, application, and then add that Win32 uh, Intune Win package. And again, the docs from Microsoft do strictly tell you exactly what you'll need to put in in order yep. to create this. Now, I've already created it on our side of things. So if I do just a search for remotes, we should see remote help come up. And we'll just take a look at that really quickly in the property section. It's just a simple, you know, calling the EXE, doing your install quiet and accepting the terms of service. Um, and there, there is the detection rule that's going to be based on the version number of the application. And from there, we made it available to enroll devices. Now, I've obviously already installed it on this particular device as well as a separate device so we can actually do a session. But again, if you're f familiar at all with using Quick Assist, it's the exact same scenario. Yep. Uh, it just looks slightly different, at least from the get-go. So you if I actually have launch... to sign into the application. I Correct. think that's the main difference. So you are always authenticated. It's not just some person doing something because there is our back behind this. So you can restrict who can do what. It, and it needs to be an AAD specific yes. user. It can't be, I mean, obviously we have hybrid enabled. You have got AAD accounts, but it does need to be AAD authentication. With all that, again, very similar to Quick Assist. So if I actually were to open up Quick Assist side by side to this, you'll notice it just has a slightly different front end. Um, so you've got your standard enter your code and your get security code or assist another person. Um, as an example on another box, I'm going to actually hit get a security code and we'll switch over to that box in a second. Um, but I'm going to generate that code. And then over work, yeah. Keep going. Yep, and I'll, let me pop over to that box just so you can see what that's looking like. And we're going to be doing a little swap back and forth here. I apologize. But over on the other device, um, where I actually selected get a security code, you'll now see that we have a security code that we can give to the end user. And there'll be the standard 10 minute timeout. With that being said, we're going to again pop back over to the end user device, our Windows 11 box. And I'm going to type in that code. And we're going to hit submit. And once that finishes, we're going to have to switch again. And again, so, I apologize for all the switching back and forth. So for those of you wondering, uh, the remote help app in its current form, I have no idea if it's ever going to be changed, but it's, it's only user initiated. Mm -hmm. You cannot remote into a and totally uh, unattended device. There is no such thing currently. Exactly. Back over on the Windows 10 device, um, you will have the option to either just view the screen or take full control. Most of the time, you're most likely going to select the take full control option. And switching back over again to the client device, they are going to get a prompt that asks them, you know, is it okay for, in this case, myself, Jacob Shackford, to access the full control of this device? We're going to select allow, and then we're gonna move back over again to the admin device or our Windows 10 device. And, and you'll now notice that we have what looks like the standard quick assist window. One of the added benefits, uh, aside from you know generic quick assist, is you will have UAC prompts. So as an example, if I were to go on the control panel, go into UAC, and I want to change those settings, you will see the UAC prompt, whereas in quick assist, you would not. So this will let you do some administrative tasks. But beyond that, it's really just screen sharing at the end of the day. Pretty simple and basic. Exactly. Um, now, there are some additional, you know, information over on the actual uh, docs page. Um, one thing that I do want to call out right away, and let me actually switch back over again, is that specifically on the setup page in the connectors and tokens where you're actually allowing this to happen, you will notice that in the remote help section that it is currently offered in preview for free. Um, but when it becomes generally available for an additional cost, so they are straight up saying that there will be an additional licensing cost for this. Um, so again, just bear in mind that while in preview, it'll be free. 
But once it hits that GA or the full release, you will most likely need to have a separate license associated with that. But other than that, very straightforward at the end of the day as far as getting this configured and actually remoting into a machine. Um, it is it does kind of stink that you have to do a separate installation. Um, yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, if you need to access your devices, this is a free way right now to do it. And keep in mind, this is a preview feature and this is very much version one. Exactly. So not feature complete. I'm sure they have a lot of other features on the backlog. This is going to be, this is a very interesting addition, I will say. Agreed. But with that, I think that about wraps up. Everything we wanted to talk about, again, very straightforward. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, again, leave them down in the comment section below. Don't forget to congratulate Johannes. Mm -hmm. um, but with that, <laughs> have a great one. Yep, bye.